Okay. Good morning. Uh, welcome to today's webinar, Digital Trends in the Education Market Report. Thanks for today. Uh, I'm going to get started. So, my name is Fairfield. I've been at MDR uh, going on nine years, and uh, for the past four or five years, leading marketing solutions product line. And so, here we've been producing a, a great report on e marketing, and it's, it's more evolved into um, digital marketing. And so, I'm pleased to present today's uh, kind of updated version of the report. Keeping items, uh, you should be hearing the audio via your computer speakers or phone. Uh, there'll be a link to the record made available later on this week. Uh, Use a couple of days to get that out. You should expect an email to access the the recording if you would like to follow up with it. And I encourage you to ask questions. So in the WebEx uh, panel on the right side of your screen, you can submit questions uh, throughout the webinar and we will make sure that we uh, answer all those questions before the session ends. Okay, uh, this is the agenda I have for today. I'm going to highlight a very from the chapter of the Digital Marketing Trends Report. But before I begin, I want to stress uh, a few things. Um, the digital marketing has evolved over recent years. We see that digital really can Consisted of running a single email campaign. And back years ago, even, that was enough to drive leads or drive sales. And I to this as the akin of um, several years back dropping a catalog being enough to, to drive sales in the education space. As you all we know, times have changed significantly. In today's world, integrated marketing is key to getting the attention of your products for your solutions in the education market. So while we go through these slides channel by channel that you see agenda here, the real hope is that you're planning your net your marketing for the future and you'll be using all of these channels in a multi channel approach. So with that, let's get started. I'm start highlights from the email chapter of the Digital Trends Report. So the work uh, for the email chapter is based on all campaigns in the 2006. 13-14 school year, which represents over 130 million email messages that VR has deployed. And you can see this is pretty pretty flat over the past uh, four or five years. Back probably in 2011-12, uh, some folks started taking emails in-house and deploying through their own ESPs because it became, um, you know, a requirement. In many cases, customers uh, wanted to tie into CRM systems. But we've seen a little fluctuation, but it's, it's relatively flat, really, uh, in terms of the number of campaigns. Just trying to put perspective on the data set here. Um, one that's interesting is in the past year, this is the highest ever, uh, high average campaign size um, of any year that we've run the report. And, you know, as we the point in, in a couple of slides, um, in many cases, the more targeted and the smaller the campaign, the better. So. Um, you know, year, year I think marketers all have the challenge of keeping their performance rates for marketing and email marketing up in terms of open and click through rates. And so the fact that we're seeing these numbers climb um, may actually be, you know, leading uh, to some of the decline in open and click through rates. So let's look through here. I'm not going to spend a lot of time um, going through, but you know, my point I just made about having the challenges of, of, of open and click rates um, is, is really pointed out here. Um, you know, one of the big, biggest challenges we all face is not necessarily our competitors in the education space. It's just the inbox in general. Uh, there's more and more emails being delivered to folks, um, and getting that attention, getting in front of them is, is, is the challenge. Really, my goal is to... Uh, to try and show today is ways that we can and, and insight into uh, accomplishing that in, in front of people and your marketing effect. So, you know, really the, the point here is more plus actually equals less in some cases. So, so we've seen more campaigns deployed in the past school year, and the average uh, list size per campaign has gone up. up. So, you know, more to more, it seems to be helping. And contribute to some of the declines in, in, in performance. 
this is an overall story, and I'm not trying to say that this holds true for everyone or all campaigns. There's plenty of success stories that, that I've seen personally, uh, and there's there's a lot of uh, you know positive trends. So let's jump into some of those. And I'm going to start looking at the size of the campaign, which is kind of the point I've been making in the last few minutes. That average number of 7.3, I believe it was, is the average open rate across all deployments to MDR uh, to the half of customers. Keep that in head. Um, we have many campaigns did by by the size of the deployment that are above that, that average. And especially far left here, we've got you know uh, 11.3 kind of and up in those campaigns, 4,000 and, and smaller. That actually represents about half of our overall campaigns that we've deployed. So um, you know, it's just kind of a one uh, one way to, to carve it up and look at it. And I'm not always be able to comb down your target list to, to this size of a campaign. Um, so it's not an absolute rule. Just trying to point out uh, really kind of a best practice of showing, you know, the more the more focused um, we can we can to increase that performance and keep those you know eyeballs as open as clicks as high as possible. And past reports take this down and get down to um, different levels of marketers. So what we've done in this year's report include information on K-12 versus college marketers. So this is the same thing. So this is for K-12 in blue, uh, higher red and orange, and the trend overall holds true with click-through information. Um, and really the takeaway here, again, is that the shotgun approach is, is just not as effective as a more focused approach. There's also the same trend um, in, in the in great in the report I have today, just for the sake of time. All right, subjects a little bit in the email and look at um, you know one thing that uh, that's a kind of favorite for a lot of folks, and asking about kind of when, uh, what the time does uh, does email seem to work best? So open a click through rate by day of the week by deployment, and in in past years. We haven't included uh, the weekend days um, in deploying those, but that's when we still uh, we still we started deploying um, on those days about a year and a half ago. So um, you know we have a full year's worth of data in this year's report. We don't deploy the volume that we do during you know the Monday through Friday spectrum, but we have enough to to get some really good direction and make it valid. So it's really interesting, right? I mean. I mean Years ago, Tuesday was kind of the spike and stood above on all of the days, and that's completely shifted. So, yes, again, kind of a cat here. This is across all of our campaigns. Um, let's get it broken down a little, little bit. So, I'm, I'm showing sliced by uh, versus high red, and keep it is just open rate. Right? So, high really winning here on Sunday. For, but keep this in mind when I get to the next slide because when we look at the click through rate for the same day of the week, uh, it's a different story. So you always need to kind of look at as much information as possible. Um, don't always go hand in hand. Uh, the day that somebody opens might not be the highest day they click. So we'll look at that in a moment. And now, as you know, in the K 12 market, um, the differences really aren't as extreme as in higher ed. Higher ed Sunday is just vastly higher than everything. Um, but in the K-12 space, we do see Saturdays clearly, uh, you know, being much higher. So, you know, interesting point here. Um, you know, the Tuesday through Friday range really doesn't deviate too much, you know, overall, if you're just looking at day of the week. So, like I said, this is only open rates. You can click through rates into consideration. Also, conversion rates. So, just because it's opening and clicking, you know, that rate of conversion is something that you should be measuring, and really you can do that. MDR can't, for instance, the end ends with us deploying it. But let's, let's look at click through rate that I mentioned. So, higher ed uh, Sunday was the clear winner, but look at the click through on Sunday. And it's pretty interesting that, that for both K 12 and higher ed, the days with the largest open rates actually had the lowest click through rate. So, what does that tell you? I guess it tells me that these educators are probably using their time on weekends to look at their inbox. Um, you know, all I think fall in the boat of uh, just having so much email that 
uh, you know, you, you need to be able to kind of get through it. And my gut me that um, a lot of this activity is probably done on a mobile device, just based on our on our usage and, and what we know. Um, people seem to be engaging and clicking on these days. So, you know, practice that we've all kind of talked about in the past is kind of triaging your inbox, and managing your emails, deleting what you don't need, and, and potentially getting back and keeping those that are interesting. So, so um, and that's that's intuition speaking, but it certainly seems, uh, you know, in one way to uh, uh, to explain some of this. Um, you know, it's also pretty interesting to me now that we've broken this down at the K-12 versus higher ed that uh, K-12 educators seem to be clicking more earlier in the week in the room at the higher ed level. So, um, again, uh, you know, just, just a trend that seems to be uh, something that, 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 you know, is showing itself. And one thing with all this information is be it here doesn't mean it's always going to apply to you. So, um, you, know, you know, learn learn what works in your world. Um, use as guidelines and, and, and try to optimize, but um, it's not necessarily going to be the same for everybody. So similar to day of week, time of day is also pretty popular. And I'm hoping that you guys are, are trying to learn what, what time work best for our campaigns. And I'm kind of actually impressed at how much the time of day uh, numbers have shifted over the years. So it used be that the 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. was you know, by far the clear uh, winner in terms of open rate, and it, it just stood by itself. Um, now we've seen much flatter across the board. Um, and my feeling, again, is that mobile kind of changed the landscape here of when people are looking at, at digital marketing messages. You know, if you have 4 to 5 and 5 to midnight, um, you know, those are clearly rising above. And we also we see this trend across our other other digital channels. So we know folks are accessing our um, our social media, uh, you know, at the you know non-conventional kind of workday times. So if you see the the, the shift in you know, you know when and where people are accessing. So one thing in the report this year is uh, information um, that goes on using automated trigger email messages. To respond. So in the MDR tool, you can easily add this uh, follow-up message to somebody's open or click. Um, many of the ESPs that you may be using, if you do your own emails, um, you know, you also offer these features. But so my point here is, is, you know, when a message goes out, and say it sends out on Sunday here, um, at a pretty high open click uh, rate, uh, you know, if two days later you have it set to follow up, um, to open or click on it, look at the open rates, you know, for those messages. And I get involved in a lot of kind of consulting and, and looking at um, various customers who aren't automated triggers. And, uh, you know, I'm really hoping just by putting these numbers in front of you, you'll see what you're missing out on, and you'll you'll start to embed that into your kind of standard marketing practice. Okay, this is just a look at the click-through rates for the same uh, you know, the same messages, the message, the initial, and the responder message by day of week. Um, these click-through rates. Our overall average was, uh, I believe, 1.3 across everything. And, you know, um, you know, seems much higher here. It's interesting to note that Sunday is really, really low. Um, but, uh, again, I think, I think that we kind of covered already. Um, so, once again, if you're not, you're not, you know, incorporating this as a practice, I would, I would encourage you to. Uh, about personalization, and you know, start just by saying that very few of our customers use any type of personalization in the campaigns that we deploy for them. Um, it's all built-in options that uh, customers can take advantage of. So the overall, um, you know, kind of data is a little bit low, but uh, this is information on, on the campaigns that we deploy. And I'll just kind of get back on my soapbox and say, um, you know, this is the best practice. And you'll see why in the next few slides, and I hope hope folks start to incorporate this more. Um, so what this essentially says is, when we deploy an email, you can choose to insert one of these personal fields into the email. And this trend's really held over the, the past few years um, in categories. So let's get it broken down again in more detail. So we didn't have this in prior years, broken up to K-12 higher ed level. Um, it's pretty interesting seeing it for the first time. So. In the 12 space, using the title really seems to resonate well. 
Uh, we hypothesized in the past that maybe last name was better in K-12 and, and um, you know, using first name. And, and so really seeing some actual data on it is pretty interesting to me. Uh, I read, you know, first and last seems to be, to be you know, popping. And, like, you know, there's not really a critical mass here, so these might not be statistically good, but they're at least directional. And I, I'm hoping that folks see this and start to test. Uh, I do have several customers who made some of these changes and really seen some powerful results. So I'm uh, really just saying that. Uh, you know, hopefully you can take the time to, to set up a few campaigns and, and measure the difference, because I think you'll be satisfied that, that you'll be able to do something incorporated going forward. So a look at the click-through rates, really kind of the same trends. So I'll keep moving in the, in the sake of time. Where MBR customers are personalizing is the from line of the email. As you can see, uh, they're customizing this the from line uh, more each year, which is good. So, uh, you know, I mentioned earlier that folks really weren't using the other personalization features, but we're seeing more and more. So, almost 20% of campaigns, the from uh, customized, meaning, uh, you know, it's not just the organization or the company name. Good thing because look at the, the next slide. And that, you know, the results markers are getting when they're personalizing the front. So using a person's name acts as a lift over our overall average of 7.3 open. Uh, you know, versus a person name with an organization name. So some folks do, you know, uh, you know, Bill Smith, um, ABC Company, right? So that's how they would execute that. Seems to get them a little bit of lift um, versus the organization only. And again, this, this is um, general. If you have a powerful brand name, this could be a different story. These are averages, but just uh, trying to put this, you know, information into your hands to try and get the most out of your, your marketing dollars. Let's wrap up personalization. Eventually, uh, everything. So it's all personalization. In the front, the two. Um, so we see a significant lift in the open rate. So we see a 15% increase in opens by using some kind of personalized message and 30% increase in click through rate. So it doesn't look like it just because of the scaling of the slide, um, you know, but the results are there. So clearly, best practice, hoping you incorporate this going forward. And this is actually the last slide I'm going to move on um, in the email chapter. Uh, you know, down in the report by primary line of business. So that really give you a baseline of how you're doing in your particular line of business. And I recognize that you know many of you are in multiple lines of business. Um, so you have uh, you know to each member who we work with a primary line of business tag. We might have a secondary. So this is looking at primary and calculating some. The, you know, the basic averages um, overall. So we're trying to give you as much information as possible to kind of measure where you are. Uh, so that as, you know, informational, and this can inform your marketing campaigns um, and, and help you kind of set some baseline, you know, success uh, measurements. For insight in the digital trends report on email marketing. And, uh, you know, I hope you found what I just went through useful. That's uh, kind of some of the highlights. But take a look at a new uh, chapter in the report, and that's on um, mobile devices. So we did some analysis on mobile devices um, opening and interacting with email. So some pretty, uh, you know, interesting information here. And we had data points in the report, but, um, again, I'm pulling out kind of the highlights. And so one of the... Uh, the most telling is this slide here. So we have you know, any type of device that we as mobile. So we put desktop, laptops, you know, standard kind of computers off to the side. And this is a breakdown of uh, mobile devices um, that are opening or, or clicking on you know, that we deploy for customers. So telling you is that there's really two types you care about. Um, and, and we probably knew this already, but this confirms it. So I don't in the, in the blue, 58% of the activity in iPad. And I guess you could say Android phone is, is kind of a bit on the radar at 4%. And most of them, you know, Windows phone, BlackBerry, for the one guy who still has it, um, other devices. Um, essentially, um, I, I wouldn't even look at those numbers. 
numbers because they're going to be misleading in the report. So let, let's an example of that, that in a couple slides. For all average um, in this in this year's worth of data that we are uh, analyzing the report. One thing to note here is that you know the iOS operating system for iPhones and I, I, uh, iPads, iPods, default is to always display images when it's opened. And as you know, uh, that's how we whether an email is opened or not. Images have to be displayed. So that'll be a, a little bit of a contributor here to the high open rate. And, and I'll show another example of why I think this is maybe a little inflated. Um, and it is actually lower than our overall average of 1.3%. To me, and to click through rate because it's often harder to view a message and click through, especially on a mobile device, um, especially if that email message is not optimized to be viewed on the mobile device. So, one point to, to, uh, to really think, hold on to is that making sure your messages render well on mobile. And I, I think we'll see this, this click through rate grow the more folks are optimizing their email as the landing page and the whole experience for mobile. So what we did here is I actually just blocked out all of the devices because they're very misleading um, because there's a few people actually engaging uh, on those devices. So um, did we include them in a the report, but I would encourage you to not waste a lot of time uh, optimizing your emails for Windows Phone since you know, less than half a percent are, are opening and, and clicking through on, on that platform. Um, Details are in the report here. Uh, I, I talked a little bit about maybe a, some inflation in terms of the overall 18% open rate. And, and, and the reason I say that is because if you look at Android phone, which um, you know almost always, or if not always, uh, require you to manually select the display image, you see a much lower rate. Um, and then a little bit higher click-through rate, which kind of makes sense to me, because if I take the time to display images, I'm probably interested in the email, finding who it's from, and the subject line. And then some of the text that's actually in the, the email itself, so I, I can see the, the bump in the in the through rate on the Android device. The same thing broken down by Kel versus higher red. So I'm actually going to put in there. Click through rate. Um, Again, you know, look at the same thing. So, it's by K12 in blue and higher red and orange by the three main uh, mobile devices. So, you know, what's interesting to me here um, is iPad is higher than iPhone. And again, you know, the reason you know, one, one of the, I guess gut belief here is that, that folks are iPads. Um, I think a lot of times, you know, if you're on your iPhone, you might be on the go, so uh, a little more time press versus iPad um, potentially. And again. You know, who knows if that's that's uh, scientifically true, but, um, you know, it's interesting that, that, that you, you see a bit of difference there. And then I think the Android phone, as we talked about a moment ago, makes sense to have that uh, that rate because if folks are going through the, the, the time to to display images, they're probably more interested already and more likely to click. Okay, so uh, I'm going to move on. So we have on web advertising. Um, so, 13, 14 school you served over 27 million web app ad impressions. And so, high-level info, um, you know, on those campaigns, and there's much, much more detail in the full report. So, this is our, our baseline click-through uh, rate average. Uh, you can see on the far left, uh, MDR served web ad campaigns are double the industry benchmark average, which is on the far right. Um, and the real reason for that is the way we actually target. So we're not just serving that because we think somebody gets to a site, we're giving them an ad because we know what their job function is, is what type of mission they're at, where they're located, et cetera. Um, a lot of detail on that, but that, that's essentially the value proposition of our web is, is that we can target to a much higher degree, no matter where they may be on, on the Internet. In the middle here, we can see that the retargeting campaigns are even higher. So the thing that's a little bit of a game is many of our campaigns don't include the retargeting component. Um, so we to let people who have taken the time to see ad get to your site, um, if they leave your site, not to retarget 
get them because you have a more uh, you know effective way to, uh, to 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 them and get them back to potentially convert by using retargeting. Through, through some of these slides, uh, again, you know, all this is in our report. So there are standardized sizes that we can serve. Even uh, half of them are in the 728 8x90, which is a leaderboard, kind of mo most standard size, the most inventory out there. That's why about the impressions are, are in this this area. Um, and let's check out some stats by size. Actually, one of those sizes kind of falls out of the mix just because we don't have enough inventory, there's generally, it's hard to serve a lot of impressions there, so the numbers just weren't uh, enough to be considered valid. Um, you know, this this is breaking down by, by size, and in the sense, the bigger the ad, uh, the, the higher the click through rate is, is, is what these numbers are, 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 you know, pointing to. Um, I tell you that is because I know that there's some questions there. Um, we we always, uh, look for ad sizes, so we're not going to uh, rent to only serve one size or another. But we're seeing that the, you know the bigger the real estate, the more attention it's going to get. Email, you know, what this tells us is that more targeted the list, the results in terms of click through rate are likely to be. The the difference is in the web advertising world, it's not to micro target as number of impressions needed to support a, a um, an integrated you know campaign may actually not be available if, if we try to get too specific. So we actually generally encourage to broaden the audience um, since the message is viewed by as much of your audience as possible. This, this is uh, broken down targeting click the rate by size. So the you know, same trend is true essentially. And then I'm going to wrap up this. And then just on to uh, a case study, and then we're going to wrap it up. So a few five more minutes. So wrapping up, um, you know, these, these uh, web ad slides. This depicts the click-through rates for retargeting campaigns, um, 100,000 in total impressions versus those higher than 100,000. Um, also, kind of the, the sum of all compared to standards. So the real point I'm trying to make is the um, level best practice is in terms of trying to uh, make web ads kind of fit into your overall marketing mix. And that point that's, I think, really important. So um, one of the benefits of running web ad campaigns is the impact that these impressions make on a user even if there's no click. So in cases, you know, the view-through benefit actually outweighs and, and, and is hard to measure, but can outweigh the click-through. So, um, you know, we've seen web ads to support marketing campaigns. I'm actually going to go through um, that in the case study slides, which are next. Okay, I'll conclude the webinar with this case study and then open it up for questions. We constantly get asked is, is um, you know, any, any real world experience or real world results. Um, marketing campaign, and so we've, you know, we've had for a long time, and we were lucky enough to uh, work with one of our customers to a very, very scientifically you know, direct marketing case study. And so the test here was to prove that, that a multi-channel marketing campaign, where all channels are working together, uh, yields strong results in a single-channel campaign. And in our heads as marketers, we probably all know this is, is this deal, um, but we wanted to prove it out in every step of the way. So our objective here was to, uh, after a list of principals and teachers, to sign up for a preview copy of a Smarter Balance uh, Core Test Prep book or ebook download. So here's how we went about it, and then I'll get to the results. And we have uh, we have some uh, literature on this as well that goes into a little more detail as well. So control group was a single email. Um, it's a follow-up automated message to, to those who open and click. We heard some of those numbers earlier. Um, and this went out to 7,000 uh, elementary educators in odd zip code. So our group was uh, a similar audience, 70,000 elementary school educators in even zip codes, a single email with, with uh, a follow-up 
but also getting um, kind of tag along emails that under the We Are Teachers brand, which is a very different voice, uh, really speaks to kind of, uh, you know, you know, the bad, more in, in uh, you know, not selling the product, but more um, kind of based on being their, their role as a teacher, things that could help them in their role. So being kind of under the cover of We Are Teachers brand, um, the difference there on the email. Also, web advertising um, banners that I just spoke about, as well as social media. So look at some of the results here. So kind of chase for the sake of time. Um, so our cell, again, was supported with, you know, email under a kind of a sponsorship, um, you know, voice, as well as social media and uh, supporting advertising. And then double the sign up than our email only control group. Let me show you some details here on, on how this broke down. Um, but so little uh, mini tasks kind of off to the side as well, where in one state we did emails with only um, banners, and and that was carved out, you know, from from the other test and control. And so we found that when we sent emails, and we all were serving banners at the same time to those audiences, uh, to those audiences um, over a period of time, um, they had a five percent lift. In signups versus just you straight up control group of, of, of only email. So, you know, one way to slice it is just you know it, it's a channel, but it's, it's purely web advertising plus email. So that five percent lift, which is encouraging. And again, if you look at the raw numbers, you're not going to see five percent more clicks on email. A lot of it was people were being served the web advertising, and then um, because of the fact that the emails in their inbox, they're more likely to click through. We had some clicks on the banners, but it's not purely we, um, all of the, the you know the conversion signups coming in from clicks on the banner, which was point earlier about through and in, in the you know the impact of serving and branding. The interesting um, in a huge kind of point here, social media uh, marketing. So we you know out onto our channels, Facebook, Pinterest, Twitter, uh, you know this campaign. We had a huge conversion rate, so 80, more than 80 percent of those who clicked in from these social media channels, more than 80 percent of them followed through and completed the whole process to request the book, or download the ebook, fill out the form, etc. And while email itself actually drove more total signups, the conversion rate was nowhere near this. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm hoping you don't do with this 80 percent number. Okay, let's just run on social media. The whole idea is that all these channels work together hand in hand and you optimize everything by running multiple channels at the same time for the same goal. Um, but seeing the 80% number really um, blew a couple of us away here because uh, that's just a really high rate. More than 80% of the folks who click through social media were, were um, completing the process here. So another interesting thing. So the, the sponsored emails from We Are Teachers um, you know, it's different than the in the in the call group. The emails from from the organization very kind of you know around their their product, their Common Core book um, versus we are teachers. You know, it just sends it in a different way, and it it's um, under a, a voice of here's a valuable resource that you might want to look at. So we saw a 20% lift in conversion rate when it came um, from from kind of this uh, you know this year. Um, and so, what that speaks to is, you know, a lot of the, a lot of what folks are talking about content marketing and the value of that. Um, and so, I think this really speaks to, you know, trying to get away from just product, pure product selling and marketing, um, and, and go to con a more content play. That and conversion was another thing that um, was very high. And then, lastly, uh, I believe this is uh, the last slide here, is adults of the web advertising alone. If you purely analyze. Uh, the the impressions to the cell here had a, a 0.2 percent click through rate, and once we went through kind of the the highlights from the digital trends report, our, our average in the in the report was 0.16, and the actual industry average was a uh, 0.08. So much much higher um, than you know, both of those essentially. And again, really the reason there is because uh, we have a fully integrated campaign, you know, about well planned, well executed. 
executed, all supporting the same end goal. Okay, actually wrap it up and take questions. Um, before I do, um, you know, just a few things. I want to talk about kind of lessons learned from the Digital Trends Report. Um, and the first is testing and learning. So we learned a lot by breaking down the report this year into those different areas. We learned a lot about you know, the differences in K-12 versus higher ed. Um, you can use that to your advantage. Um, you know, the differences in personalizing versus not personalizing. What seemed to work, maybe you start with the testing in those areas and things you picked up, we'll pick up from the report. Uh, you know, mobile marketing. So, you know, there I think a lot that you can check as, as starters. If you don't feel confident that you can, you know, fully test, um, you know, several different variables, start with one thing. Um, you know, the, the feedback in the, in the results are usually immediate. Um, so, you know, that's something that, that we should all be doing as marketers is continually testing, continually learning. Last point, I, I think I already made through the case here, but integrating channels, um, with through campaign results. So the one and um, you know singular approach to thinking is definitely a thing of the past, and, and we've proved it with with the case study, and um, you know would love to uh, you know help you to kind of prove your own campaign. So you know innovation across channels is really key. If you're if you're not there yet, again, um, small baby steps, and and uh, you can get to that point. Uh, thanks for joining, uh, um, and I think we have a bunch of questions here, or at least a few. Uh, we'll start, and uh, you know, feel free to type them in, and, and we'll try to make sure we get to all of them. First is, what is the time frame for uh, this set? So, yeah, good question. Um, so, in each trends report, we we go for a full school year, and so in this report we went on the 2013-14 school year. So the exact were um, July 1st, 2013 through June 30. So that actually for everything. Um, the email um, stats. The, um, the case got a little bit different. That, that, that wasn't obviously for a whole year. It was, it was about six weeks of campaign, campaign to different channels. And actually we have the exact dates um, in the case study um, uh, in, in a piece of literature that we created. Question here. Uh, give an example of title, i.e., dear superintendent, do you mean principal Smith, et cetera? Yeah, so the way that people are executing those personalization um, tactics would be to do that, to, to put a um, Kind of a, a, a mail merge and a dynamic insert. So, dear, uh, you know, insert whatever field it might be. Uh, you know, super, it, you know, whether title would be that it's on our database. We have that. We can populate there. So, um, they might be using it as a, you know, as a, you know, their style of the salutation. Dear, they might be using it in, um, in dynamically inserted into a sentence. You know. Well, teachers, you know, are interested in, in, in reading curriculum, just making it up, but, but you know, putting into kind of the, the subject line or into a sentence. So uh, it's very easy to do. The message would just kind of be created around what that field that you want to insert. And so you want to try to make the, uh, you know, context and the syntax work. So that question. Uh, are you okay? Next one. Are average open rates taken from mean of all different open rates, or is it open divided by total deliverers? Is the size of the email taken into account? Okay. So the way that we um, are calculating our averages are they're based on unique opens, first of all. So we have information on total opens and total open rates, but we almost by default always just purely report on unique open rate and unique rate, and it's, it's an average, just not a mean. Uh, so we do take the number of that were delivered um, after the fact. So you know, a, some small percentage of emails aren't going to deliver, but we actual number of delivered, um, and then you know, divide the unique open for, to get the unique open rate. There's another a number of others might might be taking different um, different calculations and and and, and uh, you know come up with different numbers. So that's how we do it. Then this is. 
is is the size of the email taken into account. I, what uh, what you mean by that? I, I I went into detail on the different um, kind of kits of of game sizes. Um, for average, uh, we there's no size involved. We just take the total number of all the verdi emails, and then the number of unique opens across. There's 130 something million emails we sent. That's how we get to those those baseline averages. Well, uh, questions coming through. This is great. Right. Um, so, how many campaigns experience through mobile versus non-mobile? Yeah, that's a great question. So, it's really exciting for me to have uh, access to this data um, from the campaign you deploy and, and be able to kind of read the device type. And by the way, um, I didn't mention this in the report. There's, there's there's operating system and there's browser type. They almost all have the same exact patterns. And, um, to me, this type is the most important one. So uh, I would start there, but there's more in the report. Um, I would say about 50% of our campaigns in total um, are being, uh, you know, open and or click through on a mobile device. Uh, you know, I, I don't really have time to kind of go through in, in detail, but um, and that seems to be about the average from what I'm seeing in kind of the, the you know B space to sometimes 60, 65 are uh, you know, opened on on those devices. So we're, we're seeing it right in line with that. What is a hot leads trigger? Okay, I know that's kind of MDR, um regular. So essentially, what that is 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 it's an automated email that you set up in advance to go to anybody who's opened or clicked on your initial message. Tool you can um, add that feature. Uh, you know, to your campaign, it, it doesn't cost anything extra. It doesn't deduct against um, if you have a, you know, any subscription plan. Um, we'll just, you know, send automated response out to those folks. So those open and click-through rates are tremendously high because they've already aged with your email and uh, they've uh, you know, taken it to the look. So follow-up messages we're seeing, you know, in those 40, 50 percent range. I think leads into um, my next question here. You were talking about your first response. Your messages were those the follow-up messages to only the people who engaged in the first email. Yeah. So, um, you know, we can end to people who didn't open the message, but in this report, we didn't go into that detail. So that was just purely the folks who engaged in that initial email. It makes a lot of sense. Those rates will be higher, and that's why I think it's important for folks to try to uh, add that uh, to their, their kind of standardized practice. No question. Why was LinkedIn not included as a social media channel in your case study? That's a that's definitely a valid question. LinkedIn is definitely a social media channel that you should uh, try to incorporate if you can. Um, it wasn't incorporated because we don't have a, uh, you know, a direct uh, AR kind of presence. On where we can target educators the, the way we can um, email via uh, via channels of, of uh, uh, sorry uh, Facebook and Twitter where we have an established follower base. Um, so that just wasn't uh, because of those reasons. Not trying to say don't use channel uh, with quite a following on uh, Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest under the teachers um, uh, brand. Established as a, an advocate for teaching and valuable content, I and mean, we don't have that in in the LinkedIn world. Let's see, I think we have. One. Question: Can you share any insights about how impressions are needed across multiple channels to break through to K twelve teachers? That's a good question, and it's probably a, a tough one to answer. Um, and the word impressions there is interesting because obviously, you know, impressions can be uh, impressions of ads being served. It can be, uh, you know, across emails, how many emails someone get, and, and across your channel. So, you know, we know that, that you know, you multiple. There's all sorts of research reports out there that you need five or you need seven, and, you know, seven, you know, uh, engagements or impressions, some interacting with your marketing materials before that they'll, they'll kind of go down the sales. Funnel and, and and go to the next step 
of the process. So um, I agree with those numbers. So if you send out seven campaigns, you're going to automatically convert everybody. So um, that's the whole point of, of the integrated multi-channel approach, and the whole point of the case study is that uh, the way you can be where your prospect is, uh, the, more, the better the chance. Um, so, you know, to me, it, if you can get in front of them, which is a little easier to do in the digital world than it is in the offline world, um, the reason you shouldn't be using all these channels together um, in, in really all different campaigns. Moving on, can you provide some example of good personalization? Example, no. I don't have something that I can pull up right uh, right now in terms of personalizing an email. A few things that I know have worked um, from the, you know customers who have have experimented and learned things. Um, some big uh, publishers have, have emails from their brand name, um, to from some of the, their sales reps or content uh, experts, subject matter experts, and seen dramatic results. Now, that won't be the case for everybody, but they have now, um, the bulk of their emails don't go out under their organization name. They go out under their real names. I've also seen good success of people, you know, dynamic inserting things like their title in the content. So working a sentence from their title, um, as they insert the title, you know that this is important in your classroom. Things that um, also, you know, even just inserting the name of the state that they're in, it makes them feel uh, like the message is more relevant to them. So there's there's a number of things, and I think you know they're all probably, probably easier to do than you think they are. So I would say get started um, with something you know simple. If you're if you're working with us, talk to your sales rep, and we can you know be a look at your can and give you some suggestions. Channels are best to use for a hyper targeted market. Superintendent. So I would say that, um, you know, it's going to be probably your best channel to target to that level. If you really need to go to a fine degree of targeting where you have multiple criteria, you know, in addition to title, um, you know, you, there's probably things like large is the district are receiving, uh, you, know, you know, title one money, for example, things like that. So email is probably always going to be your best channel there. Um, I would say that one email is not going to cut it. You know, you need to try to create a, a campaign that doesn't speak to specific, you know, product. Uh, it's got to be more uh, evolving a problem and probably be uh, a multi-touch approach where they get several emails. But emails I think will work. Um, you know, you know, later on, on um, web web advertisements, you might not be able to get as targeted, but um, I think you can have a lot of those people that, that will. 5% lift in the case study. Um, and uh, even social media, even though you can't target as specifically, uh, unless you really have a problem with other people seeing your message, um, you know, Twitter, we can target on Twitter. So, you know, the channels and things in the digital space are changing very frequently. Um, you know, our capabilities today that we can target on Twitter uh, were very different, you know, two months ago. So um, I would keep keep a couple in mind. And again, you know, talk and we can we can help you plan. About subject line best practices beyond personalization. Yeah, um, that's a good point. So uh, I didn't really spend a lot of time on that. Um, definitely, I would I would just uh, try to be quick here because I think coaching an hour. But uh, my, my overall uh, I guess recommendations on subject line would be to test uh, as you can. Um, keep in mind that you don't want to test campaigns that are really really small. Because you might be led, but if your if your campaign's above uh, you know you know several thousand, you're probably seeing testing. Um, and what seems to be working are, are are kind of button issues. If it's targeted to a, a specific type of teacher, trying to get what the challenge is, maybe what's helping, what's working, what's helping them in their role, just being relevant in the content itself. Um, there's some you know best practices around how long the the, the subject line should be. Um, I don't want it so long that they can't really read the read the uh, the, the bulk of it. You know, sixty character range is probably about the longest you want to go. So it's a high level, but um, th those are some starting points. And again, you know, feel free to shoot an email, uh, and I can I can you know give you some other uh, there. A couple more, and then we're gonna wrap it up. Um, 
So this on the case study, what was the timeline for each channel? Where was running before email sent, et cetera? Yeah, good question. So the, the timeline is, is actually um, documented in our case study. Um, you know, we, have a, we have a PDF that's available. Um, and so the timeline's in there. Uh, the, what, the web ads and email started essentially right around the same time. Um, I don't remember off the top of my hand if, if you know, what first, but it was all um, around the same time. So uh, I would say, you know, contact um, someone in, in our sales and they can give you a copy of that and give you, yeah, I think that the overall time frame was about a, um, a four to six week period. All listed about, you know, which, which, the, which emails, the, the zip, the even zip, the banners, the social pushes, et cetera, all documented. Okay, quick follow-up on that. It looks like which was best, Twitter, Facebook, or Pinterest? Um, Facebook actually drove the most in terms of uh, the social media channels, but um, we considered the, the Twitter and Pinterest numbers good, just not to the same volume um, as Facebook. I got one of these questions. I already answered it. Um, and I'll leave this as the last question. Do you guys target educators on Twitter? We do. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's probably the newest things that we do at AR. Um, it's very exciting. We can, we can target... Um, uh, tail audiences on, on Twitter and you know, segmented by uh, title and some other criteria. So, uh, and it's, it's kind of fast and exciting and changing constantly, but we do it and we've run some campaigns and we'd be uh, definitely happy to uh, obviously to work with you on that. So I would suggest, you know, calling in and uh, that. And as we, as we, uh, you know, integrate channels, if it's like, for example, if LinkedIn other channels come available, we'll make sure everybody knows. I'm going to wrap it up. Thank you for all the great questions and attending. I hope this was helpful. The report is available. It's about 120 pages, a lot of really good detail. Uh, you're going to get an email uh, later in the week, uh, a link to the recording, and I think with addition about the report. Uh, and so hopefully uh, you follow up on that. And thanks for joining, and we're going to end the session.